In this screencast, I will show you how the application scheduler feature in EventSentry works based on the example of the check URL utility from the EventSentry sysadmin tools. So what's the application scheduler? The application scheduler in EventSentry, which can be found under the system health packages, allows you to schedule any process or script from within EventSentry and analyze the results from that script and optionally uh, generate alerts. So when we look at the system health packages here and we add a new package and let's just call it a check URL based on the check URL utility then we can add an application scheduler package here which allows us to schedule any sort of command. Now before we do that let me take a quick look here at the check URL utility here. If you go to the eventcenter.com website and head to downloads sysadmin tools, you'll see an overview of all the utilities that are provided or that are part of the event center sysadmin tools. And on the monitoring tools here we have check URL. Check URL basically lets you, uh, in addition to verifying that whether a particular page is up and running, uh, it also lets you look for specific text on the page so you can get an alert if a particular text exists or does not exist so if you're looking if you have a web page where you know that the uh, the text login or status appears then you can then check URL can essentially let you know if for some reason that text goes away for example if somebody uh, would have changed the website or if the website is the page or if the website is down in addition uh, check URL also can take checksums of the page. So it will download the page, generate a checksum, and can then let you know if that checksum changed. So if you have static pages and you want to make sure they don't change, uh, then check URL uh, will do that for you. So these events entry sysadmin tools are already installed on this test machine here. And like I just shown you, we added an application scheduler package, which of course doesn't have any commands listed quite yet, so it's not effective. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make this a global package that way it ensures that it will actually be used by the agent here and we'll add a schedule here. The application scheduler defaults to the recurring schedule and we'll change this to a smaller amount, 15 seconds just for testing purposes here. And the events entry sysadmin tools are in the program files x86 sysadmin, sysadmin tools folder and the utility itself is called check url.exe I'm going to put that in quotes since the path contains a space and we'll have to um, pick a website that we want to monitor so let's take a look here so the check url utility here if we just call it with the question mark here I will see all the options that are available. It supports proxy servers. Um, it has some SSL options, uh, timeout settings, uh, authentication options. So if the page you're trying to access requires authentication. And finally, a few of the output related options here. You can log to the event log or log to the console or both. And some of the checksum options. So what we're going to monitor here is I've got a test website running here in the local host and we're going to monitor that page. So the first and the, the, the most simplest syntax of check URL is to simply point it to a website. So we'll say localhost here. We'll run it and the message that we're getting here is checksum initialized. Um, here just some output, standard output, letting us know uh, some of the default options that check URL picked because we didn't specify them. If we run it again, we'll notice that everything is the same except that this time it let us know that the checksum of the URL localhost did not change because of course uh, we didn't change this page, this is a static page. Uh, quite simple. So we'll just incorporate this uh, command line here, check URL localhost, and we'll implement it here in the application scheduler. Uh, so we have the path uh, to the execu executable here and I generally recommend um, always specifying the full path just to make sure that we're picking the right executable. 
and we'll write localhost here. We'll change the maximum runtime of the process since we know this shouldn't take longer than a few seconds. We'll, we'll set it to two minutes just in case. So if this application ever runs, if checkerl this process ever runs more than two minutes, uh, event center will terminate it. Now we'll hit the test button just to see if it works. And we can see here uh, it works. We get the same output and here it says the checksum of URL did not change. So we'll hit OK. Here we've got the overview again. And you want to pay attention to these settings here as well. So these are these are set on the per package level. Uh, and this uh, pertains to the application return codes. So most of the utilities in the events under sysadmin tools uh, return have different return codes similar to the error level uh, that you can view from a command prompt. And if the tool does not report an error, the return code will usually be zero as an in informational. Um, whereas if the return code is a non-zero, event entry will log the output as an error. So depending on the return code of the application that you're running, event entry can either log it as an informational event or as an error event to the event log. But let's just save the configuration here and see what happens. We're going to head to the application event log and we're going to wait for a 1035 event which will indicate that the configuration of the agent has been refreshed. And here it is. So when we look at that event here, you can actually scroll down and we'll see here that we have a check URL package that we just created and global means it's assigned globally because that's what we chose to do. Now since this process runs every 15 seconds, the first few entries should already be showing up and they already have here in 15 seconds in the walls. Let's open the most recent one and again we've got the same output that we had before. The checksum did not change. So it's already being run and it also tells us how long the utility was run. So in this case um, for one second. And if we refresh again we'll have a lot more instances. So that's really as easy as it is. So you can see here that the entire output of the script is actually embedded in the event. So if you were to set up a rule, an event log filter that will forward you the output of this particular event, then you would actually get the output of the utility straight in your inbox without having to access any sort of reporting or accessing the event log. Now let's take this a step further and let's trigger an error by changing the website. Here we have a page that says welcome to Nginx and we're going to change that. We're going to open this up in an editor and we're going to change the exclamation point with a question mark. Hit save. I'm going to refresh here to make sure that the change actually took place and it worked. So we've got a question mark here and now let's wait uh, 15 seconds and we should immediately get an alert here of the check URL utility detecting a checksum change and subsequently triggering an email alert and here it is. So here on our test machine um, we've got some output here and here it is. Again this time it ran for two seconds so it took a, a little bit longer and we have the first message saying here the checksum of URL changed and this time the check URL utility returned an error code that was not zero because whenever the checksum changes, check URL will log error code 1. Uh, and that, in, that on the other hand, in, re, in return, so let's refresh this here, triggered an error at 608.45 indicating that the checksum has changed and of course subsequent runs of the execution of the process result in an informational event again because the checksum now has not changed after that. And that's really as easy as it is. So you really just uh, create a new package, add the application scheduler to the package, make sure it's assigned correctly, specify your utility and obviously we recommend command line utilities here because um, those are the ones that will return output that we can capture and display and log to the event log and subsequently embed in emails. And that makes this a really a powerful utility because you have full control over when this process will start and if there ever is a problem then you can get the output of the utility 
sent straight into your email inbox without having to do any sort of additional troubleshooting. And if the utility or batch file or script that you wrote is very verbose, then in most cases you'll be able to know exactly what's going on just by looking at the email here. I will follow this screencast up with a more advanced second part where we're going to be looking at the timeout options here and create uh, alerts based on the amount of time it takes for this utility to run. But this concludes the screencast. Hope it was useful and thank you for watching.